Video cast number 78, Planning the Scouting Year. One of the great things about planning for the scouting year is that each year you can start with a clean slate. If things worked out well last year, you can repeat events or activities. If things didn't work out so great, you can learn from it and carry that with you into the new year. But in each of these cases, you are starting fresh. If this is your first time going through the process of planning out a year for your trooper pack, then it may seem like a daunting task. But unless you're a new unit, you have the history of the past year, two, or three to use as examples. So ask your scouts, parents, and leaders about what has worked and what has not in the past. For the rest of this video, I'm going to speak in generalities, but looking at it as a troop leader is different than looking at it as a pack leader. In a troop, the boys and girls are supposed to drive the program on what to do. In a pack, you're designing the year for the group. Now, while the boys are supposed to choose, it doesn't mean you shouldn't do some homework ahead of time and plan things adjusting for the wishes of the boys or girls. I usually start by laying out a calendar. I've included my Microsoft Word calendar for the upcoming year in the show notes for this video cast. But you can just as easily do this on a printed calendar or print out some pages from Google Calendar or something similar. From the calendar, lay out all the local school holidays, religious holidays and troop or pack meetings, special days or special events. I like to add council activities such as camperies, Weeblos events for the Cubs, and OA days for the Boy Scouts. This gives you the framework for days to avoid when planning your events. On the Boy Scout side, we plan for a camping trip every month, with the summer months reserved for summer camp. On the Cub side, there are more local events, especially if you're trying to earn the Summertime Award. This is where your research and local expectations come in. In the pack, we would plan a camp and experience at a venue like a battleship or a museum every year. On the Boy Scout side, we do something similar where we go on a historical trip, usually to another city. For both of these, we would rotate on a three to four year schedule so during their time in the program, the boys would have the opportunity to experience it as a younger scout and then as an older scout. It also gave them a second opportunity if they couldn't make it the first time. It's important to begin this process early, as many troops and packs do similar things. So early planning tends to have better results and not have you get shut out of things. You continue this pattern until you get all the campouts, trips, and events you would like to have for your unit. And when possible, booking these events lets you set the pricing for the experience in advance. It also gives you the opportunity to publicize it in advance so families can mark it on their personal calendars, giving them the opportunity to plan around scouting events instead of moving their plans around to accommodate them. This is also a good opportunity to have others in your pack or troop to help you in a low-impact, confined way. If they suggest a trip, for instance, have them plan it. You'll have someone booking it who's invested in it and take some of the load off of yourself. The more folks who can help you research, plan, book, and attend, the better off you'll be and the stronger your unit. But this is what works for us. Take what you like. Leave the rest. And as we say in Wood Badge, feedback is a gift. Leave yours below in the comments with all the hope we can learn together. I'm Scoutmaster Dave, and this was a bit on yearly planning. <laughs>